This video was brought to you by the ILC. Hello once again, welcome to episode 51. In this episode we're going to show you how to find an inverse function and find its domain and range. Let's take a look at it. Alright, part A of our problem is to find the inverse of the function fx equals root of x minus 1 plus 3. The first thing I'll do is simply replace the fx with y. So our function is y equals root of x minus 1 plus 3. To find the inverse, we will need to switch x and y. So the y becomes x, and the x becomes y. The rest of the function stays the same for now. But now that we've switched, that our goal is going to be to get the y by itself. All right, so let's think about what we have to move first. Well, this plus 3 is not really attached to the y, so that seems to be a good candidate. So we'll subtract 3 from both sides. The 3's on the right cancel out, and on the left we'll have x minus 3 equals square root of y minus 1. Now we have to remove the square root. The opposite of square root is simply squared, so now we will square both sides. So let's write x minus 3 squared equals square root of y minus 1 squared. But the square and the square root cancel each other out, leaving us with y minus 1 on the right. On the left, I'll simply leave this as x minus 3 squared. Now there's only one more thing we have to move. The y is where it should be, but there's a minus 1 attached to it. So let's add 1 to both sides. So now look at what we have. On the left, we have x minus 3 squared plus 1. On the right, we simply have y. What we'll write as our answer is f negative 1 x equals x minus 3 squared in the parentheses with a plus 1 on the outside. This f negative 1x is usually read as f inverse. This is likely to be how they want you to state the answer. Now that we have f inverse, part b will be to find the domain and range of the inverse function. Oddly enough, to find the domain and the range of the inverse function, we are actually going to start from the original function. That is, y equals root x minus 1 plus 3. The same thing we started with. Let's think about the domain. Now recall that for the domain of a function that has a square root, the things inside the square root must be greater than or equal to 0. So we'll say x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 so x must be greater than or equal to 1. To write that in interval notation, we'll say that 1 is the minimum, but it can go up to infinity. Bracket 1, comma, infinity. To find the range, we're going to place x equals 1 into the original function. Therefore, we'll have y equals square root of, rather than x, we'll say 1 minus 1 plus 3. Of course, 1 minus 1 is simply 0. Therefore, we'll have y equals 3. So now to find the range, let's remember what a square root function looks like. So think back to your earlier material when we talked about what square root functions look like square root of x looked something like this. Now we've added a couple of transformations to it, but it should still look something like this shape, 
where the starting point is also the minimum. Therefore, ry equals 3 is also the minimum. So our range will begin at 3, and we can see that the function continues to increase off toward infinity. So that tells us the domain and range of the original function. To find the domain and range of the inverse, all we do is switch the domain with the range, so that the domain of the original function becomes the range in the inverse function. So we'll say the range of the inverse function is 1 to infinity, and the domain of the inverse function is 3 to infinity. And that's our answer. Now we found the domain and range of the inverse function because we know it's just the opposite of what the domain and range are in the original function. Alright, thank you for watching. We'll see you again next episode.